On the left, weighing in at 56.4 pounds with a three inch depth, armed with Google TV and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, it's the Hisense U8K. And on the right, weighing in at 50.1 pounds with a 1.7 inch depth, also armed with Google TV and a whole bunch of other cool stuff, it's the TCL QM8. Are you ready to... <coughs> Oh, sorry. Can we just compare these TVs now? Welcome back, everyone. I'm Caleb Dennison, and if you think that was a silly intro, wait until you see what I've cooked up for the Nakamichi Dragon versus Sono surround system. That is gonna be next level. Which, by the way, please hold on to thy shorts. The next video in which you see this face will be that comparison video, right? There's no way that gets bumped, <laughs> is there? Look, I promise that video is coming to your screen very soon. But look, this TV comparison is long overdue. We had to move and stuff. If you haven't seen the reveal video on this new space, highly recommend checking that out. I appreciate your patience during that transition time. You all have been very gracious in the comments. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. But we're here now, and I wanted nothing more than to make this comparison our first project in the new space. So here we are. And whoo boy, is this gonna be one heck of a comparison because these two TVs are both very, very good, especially considering their very attractive price points. I think it's fair to say that these TVs are setting the standard for what's to be expected when it comes to performance for the price. The fact that these TVs do what they do at their price points means that TVs that cost more are gonna need to offer some pretty significant upgrades to justify their higher prices. That makes these two TVs a driving force in the market and kind of a big deal. And also, the race between these two TVs is pretty tight. I mean, they are head to head in so many ways that I can tell you right now that which one you prefer is gonna come down to one, maybe two little considerations. It's almost a coin toss, but I know folks really latch on to like certain things. So hopefully I can help you figure out which one of these two TVs you would prefer to buy. So let's kick things off with a bigger picture comparison. Then we'll dive into a few nitty gritty elements, the stuff my knit nerd fam likes to get into. Then we'll bring it all home at the end with a few key takeaways. Sound good? If so, smash this video with a like. All right, let's go. Starting with the TV stands. The Hisense UAK has two feet that you can position at two different heights, and you can set them in toward the middle for a narrower stance that works with smaller media stands, or the wide look for more stability and to accommodate a wider soundbar. The TCL QM8 has a pedestal style stand and it also offers two different height settings for accommodating a soundbar. Though, it is worth pointing out that the soundbar will definitely be kind of high centered on the pedestal. Here's TCL's own 5.1 soundbar that I'll be reviewing shortly for context. Now, I mentioned soundbars because I think a lot of folks will want sound that's as good as the picture, but unlike many TVs today, these both have better than average onboard audio, which I'll discuss in a moment. Both TVs are attractive enough, but I'll point out that the TCL is about half as thick as the Hisense U8K, and I also like that its logo isn't as shiny. So if I had to pick a winner on aesthetic, I'd go TCL in this case. Both TVs have four HDMI inputs. On the Hisense, two inputs are labeled 4K 144 Hertz, indicating those two are HDMI 2.1 compliant. However, note that one of those 4K 144 Hertz ports is the eARC port. The TCL QM8 has one port marked 4K 144 Hertz and one marked 4K 120 Hertz, but neither of those are the eARC port. So hooking up a soundbar or AV receiver to that eARC port doesn't take up one of your TV's gaming ports. And I like that. Here are the remote controls, Hisense on the left, TCL on the right. The TCL remote is slimmer and longer and sits flat on a surface. The Hisense remote is shorter, wider, and wobbles on the table a bit. Not sure if you care about that, but thought it was worth pointing out. Drop a comment now if remote wobble rubs you the wrong way. Both of these remotes are backlit. However, the TCL remote backlight is usefully brighter and it's motion activated, so when you pick it up, it lights up. The Hisense remote dims a couple of seconds after your last button press and doesn't light up until you press a button. So for me, that's not especially helpful. I personally prefer the TCL remote, even if it is a bit larger. 
power the TVs on and you're gonna be greeted by your Google TV interface. There are no Roku versions of these TVs at this time, and I kinda have my doubts that there ever will be. I've spent a good amount of time clicking through these menus and they both behave more or less the same. They're both pretty snappy and responsive and app loading times are about the same for each. No meaningful differences in performance, but the menus are broken down a bit differently. And as I'm always having to get into the menus, I've noticed that I tend to prefer how TCL has chosen to lay things out. I don't think this is a meaningful difference for most people though, so that's why no ding. Let's talk about feature support. And these TVs offer so many features that it is impossible to list them all, but I'll run through those that I think are the most important. Both offer HDR10, HDR10+, Dolby Vision, and HLG HDR support. The Hisense U8K packs an ATSC 3.0 tuner in it. The TCL does not, though so far, I don't consider so-called next-gen OTA broadcast support a bonus for most folks. And honestly, by the time ATSC 3.0 does offer something cool, it might be time for a new TV anyway. That said, the Hisense has it and the TCL doesn't, so props to Hisense. As for sound quality, I first want to say that I appreciate that both Hisense and TCL put some effort into the onboard sound systems for these TVs. They both have big bass transducers on the back to help add fullness and richness to the sound, so it isn't just a piercing nasal mess. With that said, the Hisense U8K sounds significantly better than the TCL QM8. The U8K has a better balanced sound signature, whereas the TCL tries to woo you with overly crispy treble and that big bass, but not enough in between. The mid-range is seriously lacking in comparison to the Hisense here. It's true that the QM8 sounds better than a lot of other TVs, but this is a head-to-head -head comparison, so the U8K handily takes the audio dub. Okay, now it's time to finally get to the part I know you've all been eagerly awaiting. Arguably the most important consideration when buying a TV, I am of course referring to the smell. Now, interestingly, the Hisense tends to have a more musky, no, no, not a good time for jokes. Fair enough. Picture quality time. And before I get into it, let me first say that performing this side-by-side -side comparison was super fun and revealing to me as a TV reviewer. And I'm very excited to share it with you. But I also need to remind everyone that many of the minute differences in picture quality that I'm going to point out could never be registered unless the TVs were side by side. If I were to put you in a room with one TV and let you watch a five minute clip on repeat and let you take notes for like a full hour, then put you in another room with the other TV and do the same, I'm willing to bet money that you would not catch about 80% of what you're about to see in this side by side. So some of this stuff we'll want to take with a grain of salt, but there are a few elements here that I think make a meaningful impact on the daily TV watching experience. So I'll be sure to call those out. So I want to take you through the experience that I had, and that starts right here on the Google TV home screen. With the TCL in its movie mode and brightness set to 49 for now, and the Hisense in its filmmaker mode, or actually I found this to be true in the theater day and theater night mode as well, I noticed the black background on some of these slides was much blacker on the TCL QM8 than it was on the Hisense U8K. I'll go through a few backgrounds here to show you what I mean, and it's consistent. Also, I noticed that even with the brightness juiced up on the Hisense, the white tiles for like Netflix and YouTube look brighter and whiter on the TCL than they do on the Hisense. Now, thinking that this might just be a difference in how the Hisense handles its onboard Google TV interface, I went into Netflix and I noticed more of the same. It's as if the black areas are made more of a dark gray, even though the TV is very capable of dimming those areas down to black. In fact, everything seems raised a bit, even though the picture doesn't have the same brightness punch, which is very interesting. Keeping that in mind, I loaded up one of my favorite clips to use right now, and we're gonna watch it together right now. We'll go into the YouTube app, and once again, you can see the Hisense background is more dark gray, while the TCL's is more black. And we'll pull up Eugene Belsky's channel and dig into this title, AK HDR Dolby Vision. It is, of course, not presented in Dolby Vision because YouTube doesn't support it. But right away, we get something that we can really dig our teeth into. About 18 seconds in, the creator starts slowly illuminating the scene. Now, we'll have to tweak the camera to show this to you, so understand that a lot of what you see on your screen has actually been manipulated by us so that you can see what we're seeing here. 
But what I noticed was that the TCL starts showing the signs of the gold foil on the champagne bottle. I assume it's champagne, might be sparkling cider, I don't know. Anyway, you can see it's taking shape here, but it is not to be seen on the Hisense yet, or if it is, it's super dim. And we're not gonna see it on the Hisense for almost a second after we've seen it on the TCL. And the time codes are exactly the same. I've watched this in real time. In fact, I'll ask Zeke to slow this down for you so that you can see it as well. This surprised me because based on the raised picture level I saw on those smart TV screens earlier, I figured the Hisense might show the bottle first, but here it is, excellent blacks and all, no blooming as the backlight system needs to activate, but I don't see the low light object. On the TCL, we have great blacks, no blooming as the local dimming kicks in on those mini LED backlights, but we can see the outline of the bottle on the screen. And then as we proceed to full brightness of the scene, the TCL is clearly a bit brighter than the U8K. And remember, this is HDR content, so the brightness is maxed out and the contrast is set to optimal. So it's really about how the TV's processor decides it's gonna present the image. And the TCL QM8 is just straight punching a little harder. Now, is that a good thing? That's up to you and what you want. So I'm not gonna weigh this as a win or a loss for either TV, it just is. Now, back to the bottle. Just for grins, I figured I would turn the U8K's dynamic tone mapping on, see what that might do, even though I shouldn't have to turn it on. And when I pull up the on-screen menu, look what happens. The light level jumps, and now I can see the champagne bottle on the screen. Dynamic tone mapping doesn't help, neither does the dark detail setting, so I leave them off for now. Now, let's pause on this scene of the bottle. There's two things I wanna show you here. One is that the TCL has the gold foil shining just a bit brighter than the Hisense U8K does, and we will see this over and over. The TCL is just brighter, both in terms of average picture level and in the specular highlights. But this scene also shows where the QM8's processing falls a bit short of the U8Ks. Take a look at this background where the light is cast against the backdrop. At first, it looks like the light pool takes up a larger overall area on the QM8 than it does on the U8K, but look a little closer and what you notice is actually happening is that the U8K is doing a better job with gradation here. The transition from light to dark here is smoother with less banding and stair-stepping on the U8K than it is over on the TCL QM8, where there's a hot spot of brightness here, then some mid shaded area, then another big step down, and then it just dumps to black. The transitions on the QM8 from light to dark are not nearly as smooth as they are on the U8K. This is where the U8K wins. And I'll mention this is an important win because when we talk about cleaning up low bit depth content like the kind we get from some streaming services, especially live streaming services, as well as some cable and satellite channels, you'll want that cleanup effort that the U8K is bringing to the table. So the Hisense U8K is offering smoother gradations, but it is also tracking just a touch dimmer than the QM8 across the board. You can see that in how much dimmer the flower in this scene is at three minutes, 35 seconds in before the light intensifies and then again after it dims down. We get more of the same with the smoother gradation on the Hisense U8K than the TCL QM8. Getting the idea here? Let's move on to some other content that I found revealing. This is the Matrix on the Mac streaming service, and I have to be careful here so as not to raise the ire of the almighty Warner Brothers, but what I noticed is that the Hisense U8K struggled to produce some detail in pretty obvious areas. In fact, all right, pause. This is where I'm supposed to show you that there was a difference in sharpness and clarity between the Hisense and the TCL using the TV's built-in apps. Unfortunately, the Hisense isn't doing today what it did yesterday, despite me repeating that test and getting the same results a good six times over. I can't account for that inconsistency. So as we go forward in this video, you'll hear me talking about how that sharpness problem stopped when I switched from the built-in apps to the Apple TV, and I did that to call into question the Hisense's performance with its built-in apps. I'll let you take from this experience what you will, but I'm sorry that I can't show you what I saw all day yesterday. But then I thought, you know what? This is from the Max app built into each TV. So let's look at the same thing running the Max app off an Apple TV 4K via HDMI to each TV. Are there any differences now? All settings being equal between the two TVs. And would you look at that? The detail on each TV is very similar now. 
it's kind of hard for me to tell what's going on uh, with Hisense's implementation of its apps, or maybe the processor sees inbound HDMI signals differently, I don't know. But on the Xbox Series X and the Apple TV, both are HDMI sources, we're seeing a cleaner image and better detail than from Hisense's built-in apps. And that's true whether it's Netflix, Max, or Disney+. Plus. Kind of interesting. As for the QM8, if there's a difference there between its apps and the, the HDMI source, it's negligible. Oh, and by the way, I did give the UAK a fighting chance and removed all kinds of bandwidth variables, etc. It was consistent. So, advantage TCL for the built-in apps. Let's move on to something else, and I'm afraid I have to pull out the old Spears and Munsell disc for this. I know, I know, we've seen it a million times, but it's a known quantity, right? So we can really dig into a couple of scenes and pick apart the differences. That's why we got to do this. Obviously, I'm going to go straight for the horses in the snowy field. Now, this content is mastered to 1000 nits, so well within the capability of both TVs, and they can decide how to spend their brightness headrooms. Let's see what they do. And look at that, they both do just fine. Once again, the TCL has higher average brightness. Bumping up to 2000 nits, and again, they both do fine. The TCL is maybe retaining a little more of the trees in the background, but overall, both TVs are doing well with this content. Now, I don't have a 4000 nit setting here, but I suspect that the Hisense UAK could end up clipping a little hard and taking some of the background detail out in an ultra bright scene like this, because when we jump to 10,000 nits, we can see that it does exactly that. However, I refuse to fault the UAK with anything since nobody will ever be throwing 10,000 nit content at this TV. And in fact, the number of times it sees 4,000 nit content will be slim to zero. So for all the content we get on the daily, both TVs handle it well, but the TCL QM8 is brighter on average. And so far I've enjoyed that, but there are some instances in which it is not necessarily a pure blessing. Let's look at these other scenes from the Spears and Munsell disc. Watch what happens when I pause just as the sun reflecting off the rightmost mountain peak reaches its, well, peak. Look, it's blown out compared to the high sense. Only lasts a second, but we can see more of it if we look for it. Here, the picture on the whole is brighter on the QM8, but look at the top of the mountain where you can see better contrast on the high sense UAK than you can see on the TCL QM8. There's just more of those dark lines in the mountain. Here it is again. Look at the stone under the rodent's feet. On the high sense, we have more of a sense of texture and color, whereas with the TCL, some of that is a little washed out. You can see this tendency to over brighten a little bit in bright colors too. Here, the top of the cactus flower looks just a little overblown on the QM8, whereas the color is deeper and the texture is more apparent on the high sense U8K. Finally, here on the Ferris wheel, clearly more detail of the lights in the center on the Hisense U8K than on the TCL QM8. Now, as for motion resolution, resolution upscaling, like from 720p to 4K, game mode picture quality, even the level of anti-glare treatment on the TVs, it's pretty much a dead heat. So, where does that leave us? Well, I've spent a lot of time with these TVs and a lot of time thinking about it. And from an everyday use standpoint, I tend to prefer the TCL. I like the remote better. I like the layout of the menu better, which is kind of a me problem. I think I'm just gonna enjoy interacting with the TCL more. From a sound quality perspective, the Hisense is definitely better, but you could remove sound quality from your decision by getting a decent soundbar. From a picture quality perspective, the Hisense does a better job with color gradation from lower quality sources, which I think is worth weighing fairly heavily. But then there's the overall brightness and low luminance picture performance where the TCL tends to stand out. The QM8 is just a brighter TV. So if you need a lot of punch, the TCL is gonna be the better pick. And if you watch a lot of really dark content, the TCL could be a better choice for general visibility, while the Hisense tends to have less noise and macro blocking with the low light images that it does show you. So for me, very personally speaking, this is a tough call. There are aspects of each TV that I want in my life. I kind of wish that one TV had them all, but don't we all? Anyway, if I had to choose right now, I'm probably gonna choose the TCL if I'm pressured. But I mean, with that said, I would be very pleased to own the U8K as well. 
I mean, folks, it is that close. Now, as if this decision wasn't hard enough already, there's the Sony X90L out there too. And if that TV was in the mix here, it would be an even tougher decision. But I'd probably pick the Sony if this was a three-way but it's not. Anyway, that's a very personal decision. That's the message I want you to get. And which TV you think is the winner comes down to your personal priorities. Hopefully I've helped arm you with enough knowledge to make a decision here. It's gonna be a tough one. Both of these TVs offer outstanding performance for the price. Perhaps the best news coming out of this comparison is that no matter which TV you get, I think you're gonna be pretty happy. Thanks as always for watching everyone. What do you think? Is there a clear winner for you and your needs? Let us know down in the comments. Maybe help others come to a decision they're comfortable with. While you're down there, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you on the next one, <clears throat> Dragon. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.